Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. No. 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 Yeah! Hello friends, welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, uh, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire, and I am super excited to take a look at another Jack and Jill competition. This is one of my favorite things to do, aside from creating new ways to dance and Lindy Hop and uh, sharing that with our school online. I've never been to Japan for swing dancing. I've actually been there uh, one time, but it was in passing. So I really didn't get the opportunity to uh, just kind of feel what it was like dancing with that community or I don't even really know that many dancers from Japan per se. So this is going to be really exciting. It looks like it's just a Jack and Jill final uh, with a band. Uh, so it means that it's improvisation with the lead and a follow. And uh, I'm excited to see what I find. And I'm going to tell you what I'm looking for afterward because I don't know what the level is going to be. So let's just jump right into it. And here we go. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right. We got some cameras moving around as they dance. This band is quite impressive. I love their outfits too. Yeah.
<laughs> He's like, it's not over yet. So I don't know who was actually from Japan in the scene, uh, nor could I even speculate because I, I just don't know. I mean, it's interesting how Lindy Hop is. Uh, I remember when I went to Singapore and Bangkok and Korea, there were people coming from other parts of Asia just to come take our classes. So it's, it's quite amazing to see how people uh, support a lot of these events. So I don't know where everybody was at, but that was quite impressive. To see so much talent there that's really 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 cool i i will tell you um from what this looks like i would put this in the category of an advanced lindy hop competition uh, which simply means a lot of these dancers understand um, how to execute and they can execute some of the more fundamental basic lindy hop shapes your swing outs your tuck turns your charleston hand-to-hand, -hand. Uh, a lot of those things are typically associated with intermediate dancing, but the thing that kind of separates the intermediate level from the advanced is that the advanced level understands how to actually do it with their body more effectively. And that's just from social dancing and practice. So this was really a surprise, and, and having this advanced Lindy Hop filter now, um, I'll have to tell you the way I would look at this is first, I'd have to go to who are the top three dancers? Who are the top three couples? And that's uh, typically the formula that I go to first. I, I say, all right, who are the top three couples and how am I actually gonna judge them based on the level that they're at right now? Because each level requires a different eye as a judge. And so um, at this particular level, I would first be looking at control of the technique because it would be expected to go from, let's say the intermediate level to the advanced level um, to, to at least be able to do the technique. I mean, that's obvious. It's better to be able to do it at the advanced level than just know about it and clumsily do it. So my first critique would go to who can control the, con, uh, the concepts better, like the technique of lead, follow, call, response, right? And so uh, I would go first to say that any of the couples that have that get top three for me have to have control. They have to have control. And the, the third place person usually has control as their highest quality. Um, they might be lacking on the other two qualities that I'm gonna mention, but the one that had the, the, the control and uh, they looked like, you know, clearly the lead knew what he was doing, the follow knew how to respond to that. First for me, uh, third place would have to go to, uh, it looks like the follower, she had a white shirt on, uh, white shoes, black pants, and she had like a headpiece, and the gentleman wore red shoes, but like a plaid uh, jacket. He was a little shorter than her. I really enjoyed their set. I mean, they went out, they were doing swing outs, they were doing tuck turns, and I was not really surprised on just the quality of what they were doing, but I was more impressed when something goes wrong, how well they were able to adapt to just recoup from the problem and make it fun. Um, I, I know a lot of intermediate dancers usually have trouble like 
correcting a mistake and not making it look so obvious that there's a giant blunder taking place. But they had that happen. They kind of did a swing out and their hands kind of separated. But the leader just kind of initiated some solo jazz and the follower was able to quickly look at what was going on. And they were able to match each other in a way that is kind of understood in swing dancing that it's okay to separate every once in a while and come back together. But they did it seamlessly. And I was really, really impressed with that because it takes a certain level of confidence to be able to not just dance Lindy Hop, but also to adapt when there is a mistake. That's huge. So for me, they got third place. They got third place. Um, if I were going to move up to the second place dancer, to me, now I have to be a little bit more picky. Obviously, I have to look at how well could they control the technique. But I also have to look at some other qualifying factors like timing and creativity, right? Um, and how well they balance those things. Now, when I mean timing, I like to talk about timing in context to the music because we're dancing to swing music, obviously. And it has very specific phrasing on when there is a climax and when the phrasing changes. And so when I'm watching dancers, uh, sometimes I like to look at how well they can emphasize uh, the solo instruments, right? Sometimes I like to look at uh, how well they can uh, transition from one phase to another, making the audience uh, appreciate what is being heard visually. They can actually amplify that. And so in this case, since both of these, both of these dancers, the second place and first place, both understood how to transition within one phrase to another, like in other words, I would say that fourth A count, they would do something different together and of course the audience would, would uh, celebrate because they could hear the transition and they could see them actually applying some new movements to that. This couple for me, the only reason I have them in second place is because their set wasn't balanced enough. And, and typically at a faster pace like this, it's really easy to get into a mode of just doing like Charleston, right? And, and usually with like gypsy jazz, it's kind of like your go-to thing. But they started off doing some really, really solid swing outs, <clears throat> some basic movements that could let me see their personality flowing. And then they went into Charleston. They stayed in Charleston the majority of the time. That's not a bad thing. I knew they can Charleston dance. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I was looking for well, what's the differentiating factor between first place and second place. And that was really the, the main thing is that they did Charleston almost the entire time. Although the Charleston that they did was technically proficient, it was excellent. Um, a lot of the moves weren't necessarily original. I've seen some of those moves before, but they were done in excellence. So I have to appreciate their craftsmanship uh, on being able to do it because obviously Lindy Hop is half craftsmanship for us in the future and a little bit of ingenuity because it's not a dance that we created and hopefully it can be around 500 years from now um, as we respect the dances uh, the dancers that have contributed to the art form before and so they did that well I mean they did it well they did a lot of of the moves that I know uh, from a lot of the original dancers from the first generation and many of the dancers who were my teachers I saw them uh, do some of those moves and that was quite impressive quite impressive and so they got second place only because there wasn't enough diversity in their set right so nothing wrong with doing all Charleston, but when I'm looking at, you know, second to first place, I'm looking at what, what can they do with the full language of Lindy Hop? Can they do Charleston? Can they swing out a little bit? Can they tuck turn a little bit? Can they break away and do something that is uh, more vulnerable, not as contrived? And so this couple, um, they were more proficient at the technique and they were able to honor some of those older movements in a way where I would say, yeah, that was good. That was really, really good. So in my book, second place, just like that. Now the first place couple, it's really tough because I almost gave the second place couple first place, but the first place couple for me was the gentleman, he had like black shirt and tan pants and the follower had like red flowers on her shirt. It was like a red flowery shirt. I think it had maybe some purple in there, maybe black pants. They had the most balance. It was all about balance. They could do the technique. They had maybe, I would say, a little less control than the second place person, but because they had more balance and variation in their movements, 
um, as a judge, it made me value their full repertoire of their dancing. They weren't just doing Charleston or they weren't just doing swing outs, right? They were doing both at the same, not at the same time, but within that set so that I could actually see who they are a little bit more aside from just dancing in the zhuzha, 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 right? And so that's weird. It's weird as a judge to be in these kind of situations where you look clearly at two couples that are almost as good as each other when it comes to their ideas. And one might be a little better on the control part, technically, but the other one could edge it out because they're showing a little bit more variety in their movements, which means that uh, they have a little bit more flexibility and, and uh, potential to do different things in different shapes, right? And so I like that. That's the way I like to look at it when it's really close. Um, I like to see who can balance more movements. Uh, Versus like, let's say, just staying in closed position the whole time or doing Charleston the whole time or just swing outs the whole time. Who can balance it? So that's what I like. Those are my top three couples in this. I really uh, thought that was fun. I like the band, too. That was really cool. I hope I hope you guys noticed that. They had like some like striped shirts on. They had the matching hats and they were really into it. I, I love when uh, events bring in bands who love playing swing music. Um, and it's really rare for musicians to be able to just like play for dancers, you know, because typically if they don't know about swing dancing as like a, a global community where people actually want to dance their music, they're generally playing in clubs where people are just like not paying attention. It's like background music and they're usually not playing swing music. It's like bebop stuff or smooth jazz. So it was really exciting to see them smiling and like getting into it as the dancers were moving. So what did you guys think about this uh, Jack and Jill competition at Mood for Swing 2019? I thought it was great. I thought it was fresh. I thought it was different. I didn't recognize any of those dancers. Um, and if I was attending that event for the first time, I would probably be really scared, but I would probably ask the one who won first place and second place, um, hey, can you show me some of those moves? Like, teach me how to do that. I would probably be really annoying because <laughs> I remember when I first started swing dancing, I didn't know the rules. I, I didn't know like you just don't go up to just talk to people while they're dancing. You know, I would be breaking all those rules to find out who these dancers are so that they could help me. So if you're starting off dancing or if you just want to get to the next level, I encourage you, you want to reach out to people, ask them like sh if they can show you something, take a class from what they have to offer. And I think it will help you because it helped me. I spent over 10,000 hours of social dancing and class to, to, to be able to master the technique. And um, here in our community, we, we basically have stripped away most of the complexity so that if you are someone at home and you want to be able to have a streamlined approach, you can do that and accelerate your learning curve at your own pace without always having to have a, a teacher like me to facilitate you along the way. So if you want to check out um, some of our techniques and some of the classes that we have to offer. We've got some free courses below. Um, it's really, really fun stuff. Some more of my original movements um, to kind of keep you inspired. So with that said, let me know what you thought in the comments section. Who do you think should have won that competition? Somebody let me know the name of that band because they're really awesome. And if they have a CD, I want to buy it. So uh, that's me. If I don't see you guys uh, online in class, hopefully I will get a chance to hear your comments in the next reaction video. Have a great day. Take care.